Hello and welcome to My Sex Bio's Fucking Capitalism. Uh, this is April's month, uh, the theme being detoxing masculinization. Um, if you haven't already checked out the intro on political economy, I do suggest checking that out just to get uh, grounding there. Um, but other than that, let's just dive right in. So we're looking at detoxing masculinization. Um, and I want to cross compare uh, the concepts of gender and race in order to understand uh, a little bit more about healthy versus toxic masculinization. Um, so to look at that, we're checking out uh, race and gender and how they're both social constructs that have biological markers, but that they each of them have, excuse me, different implications around uh, how those play out. Uh, whereas uh, under race, whiteness, is a social construct that was specifically invented to oppress those who were excluded out of it. Uh, the whole purpose of whiteness was to oppress other people. Whereas uh, within gender, the social construct of masculinization existed long before the patriarchy, long before capitalism, and it's just been corrupted by those forces, by white supremacy. Um, now, that doesn't mean that it's easy to be, detox your masculinity and to have healthy masculinity. It just means that it's possible that there is such a thing as healthy masculinity. At least that's the way that we're looking at it. I'm open to argument on that. Um, but that's the idea. Um, so uh, again, whiteness was specifically invented to oppress other people. Masculinization existed before capitalism uh, corrupted it or the patriarchy or white supremacy corrupted it. Um, and that's why we can uh, begin to try to detox it. Um, as a side note, that's also why blackness can be reclaimed is that it was specifically invented to be oppressed. And so those people who were oppressed under blackness uh, can reclaim it as a, a survivor uh, mechanism. Whereas whiteness, we there's nothing to reclaim there. Uh, the uh, original invention was just for harm. Um, excellent. Uh, so that is just a, a bit on why uh, masculinization can be reclaimed, can be detoxed. Whiteness cannot be reclaimed or detoxed. Great. Um, so uh, looking at how we might do this then, I want to... Uh, name that the dominant narrative is that there is over here on one side being racist or sexist or toxic or, or whatever kind of bad thing we have. And then it's a gradual moving over to being anti-racist or feminist or healthy um, on the other side. And, uh, and that we, we move farther and farther away from being racist and sexist and toxic. Um, now I want to offer uh, a slightly more accurate narrative. I'm not saying that this is the most accurate, um, but I think it will be more helpful than the dominant one, which is that uh, rather than having this one spectrum where you move along uh, toward one side and farther from the other, there are actually two uh, barometers and you can be both anti-racist and racist at the same time. In fact, as a white person, I would argue that that's the most that I can do is be an anti-racist racist. And as a cis hetero man, uh, the most that I can do is be a feminist sexist. And the most that I can do is be a healthy, toxically masculinized person uh, because I will always benefit from the forces that oppress others. And that will always socialize me in certain ways uh, throughout my lifetime. Um, I can and am doing the work to uh, to limit the, the influence that has on me, but it's always going to be there. Um, so uh, this is to say that um, there's no line that we cross where like we're done being racist or we're done being sexist or we're done being toxic. Um, so that will always be there. Just wanna make sure that that's clear. Great. Uh, so that brings us to the question, how do we do this detox? Um, and I think that uh, in order to detox, it's important to do two things. One is to metabolize the toxin, to process whatever those uh, those things that we consider toxic, whatever's going on there, process those. And then on the other hand, we want to keep ingesting healthy things uh, to, to cleanse out our system. And there's always at play the, in, the interpersonal and the institutional. Those things are always at force. Um, so I want to I wanna look at both in terms of detoxing uh, masculinization. Um, both things 
require study, require reading up. And when I say read up, that includes podcasts and YouTube videos and, and all those kinds of things. Uh, but study, study up. Um, and emphasizing decolonial and BIPOC feminisms and their critiques, um, and then engaging in those critiques. Uh, so on the interpersonal side I have here, looking at representations of masculinization uh, and, and critiquing them and seeing what's healthy and what's toxic and, and what's going on there. Um, and we'll, we'll get to some recommendations and examples on that uh, in the resources. Um, on the institutional side, I think uh, that means addressing uh, sexual assault and the uh, lack of accountability for it, uh, giving us rape culture and and taking apart uh, the things that patriarchy uh, impose on us, uh, creating these more relational systems uh, that have uh, accountability uh, uh, built into them. Uh, on the interpersonal side, we have receiving feedback and especially uh, from women and trans and queer folk uh, that will go a long, long way to detox our masculinization. Um, and I think that there is such a hyper value of the concept of leadership uh, in our society in general, but especially for uh, white men. And um, I would argue that one of the best ways that we can detox our masculinization is to practice followership. Uh, and showing up in that way, especially followership uh, in the the footsteps of trans and queer and women of color leaders. Um, and modeling that for other white men is super powerful um, and, and teaches us a lot as well. Uh, I know when I'm uh, practicing good followership of trans and queer and women of color leaders um, that I, I do uh, metabolize a lot of those toxins and I do uh, those those healthy practices so like whatever resistances I feel to practicing good followership I note that and I I inquire and I ask myself um, to move forward in there I sit with those feelings um, and then I, I try to take responsibility for those feelings that are coming up saying you know uh, to, and going through the process myself of when this happened these feelings came up rather than like uh, projecting them onto uh, the trans and queer and women of color leaders uh, and saying like, you know, you led poorly or something like that. If I feel those resistances coming up, I want to, I want to explore those and metabolize them uh, in that way and, and see what they're about. And I'm a big fan of nonviolent communication for that very purpose is that it has a, a radical responsibility concept of, uh, of being with our feelings. On the institutional side, uh, we do need more women in power, especially trans and queer and women of color. Um, and that uh, definitely needs to be reflected in our movement organizations. Um, and I, I think that uh, that will contribute toward uh, the holding toxic masculinization more accountable, which is a lot of what we need on the institutional side in terms of how to detox. Um, and then going further into that socialist feminism stuff, uh, we are looking at abolishing private property uh, and, and in, in doing so abolishing capitalism. And so that's the detoxing the toxin or that's the metabolizing the toxin. And then on the uh, ingesting the healthy, we need to build more relational infrastructure. Um, the the decolonial feminism is a uh, has a lot of really good uh, analysis on that. What does it mean to build relational infrastructure? Um, and uh, I would love to go into more detail on that, but this is just an overview. It's not everything we need to do to detox. Uh, it's just uh, some uh, footholds for you uh, to explore when you're uh, doing this work yourself, which there's no way of getting out of. Um, so that is just a little bit on how to detox. Uh, this is one example of how to promote healthy masculinization. In my uh, research for this presentation, I found this chart. I like it. I'm sharing it. Um, so you'll see a lot about uh, being with our own feelings uh, and having a healthy range of emotions. Just a lot of that, that kind of uh, learning how to uh, take responsibility for our feelings and, and be with them. Um, and then you can see uh, model and teaching boys about consent. Uh, there's a lot of uh, intersectionality of uh, toxic masculinity with ageism, just because uh, so much of how toxic masculinity gets perpetuated is 
through what we teach our young males in society. Um, and uh, we need to train and teach uh, our young males to take responsibility for feminism and gender equality, uh, rather than just uh, looking at that as a, uh, an, as an exclusively women's issue. Um, it's everyone's issue. Uh, so this is just one model, but there's tons of stuff out there. Uh, you can check out this group uh, at boysdon'tcry.ca. Um, that brings us to the resources. Um, now the lower left over here, that's uh, more of the general political economy stuff, uh, which if you have seen the video on that, um, those are some really great resources for it. Um, on the other side here, uh, these are videos about toxic masculinity in some form or another. Um, and I've also paired each one. Uh, the, the videos on the left are uh, more lecture or analysis style, and the videos in parentheses are art pieces of some form, whether that's a movie or a performance poem or a song that I think works well with uh, the, the lecture. Um, so I'll name uh, Feminist and Cell Block Wise, a really great documentary about uh, male prisoners organizing uh, to teach themselves feminism, really powerful stuff. Tough Guys 2 is an excellent documentary. Um, it's, a, it's not so much a sequel as it is a, a, a modernization of the original Tough Guys, so you don't need to watch the first one to, uh, to go into the sequel, the second. Um, Semiotics of Cuck is a fantastic video on the intersectionality of race and, uh, and toxic masculinization. Um, and Big Joel's The Red Pill, if you are uh, familiar with the men's rights movements and their talking points, uh, that one's an excellent uh, breakdown of those uh, via a documentary that he, he dissects called uh, Red Pilled or The Red Pill. Um, Pop Culture Detective Agency is a whole YouTube channel that does excellent uh, work on critiquing the ways that masculinization is represented in pop culture. Um, and uh, the rest of those are really excellent TED Talks. Um, and uh, yeah, I strongly suggest all of them. Um, I'll say Boys Will Be What We Teach is a, a great piece on uh, especially uh, how masculinization uh, shows up and what, we, what people are doing about it in, uh, in marginalized communities. Um, Violence and Men is an excellent uh, look at the ways that we look at domestic abuse and how that colors our idea of, of where the responsibility is. Locker Room Talk uh, is an excellent presentation uh, from a uh, female educator who uh, especially works a lot with young athletes. Uh, really good stuff there. And Lived as a Man and, and a Woman is a TED Talk from a trans woman who uh, speaks to the different ways that she's treated uh, when she was living uh, as a man versus living as a woman. Um, and then all of those art pieces are, are fantastic. Uh, strongly recommend them. Moving forward, just other media here. Um, and I'll move myself over for this one. Uh, the Liberate app is a fantastic app that is designed by people of color, uh, especially for people of color, but us white folk are welcome to it too. It is a, a meditation app that includes guided meditations on things like masculinization as well as race and uh, and other more uh, politically oriented things. Um, Dear Men is a, a podcast that uh, is dedicated to exploring healthy masculinization. Um, that's some of that ingesting the healthy stuff um, that we need. Uh, every interview, it's hosted by a woman and friend of mine, uh, Melanie Curtin, and uh, every every episode uh, it interviews a man doing uh, healthy masculinity work of some kind, and they and they go into those conversations. Uh, Awards for Good Boys and Beat Me Up Soft Boys are excellent Instagram accounts that are, are just uh, ways to uh, critically examine uh, how toxic masculinization shows up, but in funny ways. Uh, so that's great. Uh, really awesome piece on solutions privilege, uh, which is, uh, uh, I think, a big part of toxic masculinity is how we jump to solutions because we who are toxically masculinized uh, have a hard time sitting in discomfort. Uh, and so then we jump to trying to fix something, uh, right? Um, 
where uh, when our solutions are to pacify our own discomfort, we're going to come up with bad solutions. So solutions privilege looks at that. Um, right to sex and broken sex and capitalism and apathy toward prison rape are all excellent, excellent articles uh, that look at uh, how uh, sexual assault and sexual abuse show up in our society um, and, and what we can do about them. Um, and then I want to share that I've written my own I Have piece. Um, the I Have is, uh, it is a complement to the Me Too movement. Um, when uh, women were sharing their stories of being sexually assaulted, uh, they were asking for men and those who've committed sexual assault to share their stories of I Have uh, in order to, uh, in, in the service of accountability. Um, and so I wrote my, I have piece on the ways that I have taken advantage of women. I'm not proud of having done those things, um, but I want to do that work of, uh, of holding myself publicly accountable in that way. And I hope that uh, that article can serve as a model for other people trying to do that same work. Um, I'm not saying that I have uh, cleansed myself. It's it's just the beginning of that work, um, but I, I offer it uh, in the hope that it may serve uh, that that movement. Um, and then below that is accountability resources. This was actually shared from someone who attended uh, April's uh, April's uh, fucking capitalism talk, um, and uh, it's a lot of resources in there on. Uh, accountability for uh, sexual assault, especially, but toxic masculine, toxic masculinization in general. Um, so I really appreciate your uh, checking out this video, and uh, I I wish you well in your own uh, work to uh, detox, um, however it shows up in you. Um, and I'll I'll be here at my sex bio and fucking capitalism. Um, you can always come to a course uh, or a talk or uh, join our Slack channel where we have discussions about these things. Um, we're, uh, we're in this together. Detoxing works better in community, um, and we need to have uh, those, those conversations. So I really appreciate uh, your contribution to that. Thank you.